the learners and our technical team uh, devasis barik uh, today our topic is about disarmament and arm controls and confidence building measures i deal with your uh, block 12 uh, sorry mps 12 and block 3 so today our resource person is going to uh, talk about disarmament arm control uh, what is disarmament because uh, in an introductory uh, line i would like to say peace security and development these are the uh, objective of human kind these are the uh, goals of all the nation because uh, today armaments and war have come to a greater and biggest danger of our living uh, they can destroy uh, us within a very short duration very small few dimension and is and everything will be will be destroyed the great and and, and immediate need of human kind is to is to strengthen international peace and security by eliminating all these armaments and and change the war the concept popularly uh, designed as disarmament and and, and and arm control disarmament and arm control uh, stand for eliminations of reduction control of all the armaments production and, and in in uh, the armaments race which includes maybe nuclear race uh, or maybe the extension of very huge uh, stockpile a uh, disarmament include very uh, including everything from total elim elimination to all the weapons to regulation or, or maybe control of some kind of weapon and and as as uh, morgan to rightly says that disarmament is the reduction or elimination of creating or all armaments and for the purpose of ending the armament race because is and everybody want peace peace in the country because uh, peace is necessary for uh, one and all and next one is the confidence building measure uh, our resource person next uh, is going to discuss about the confidence building measure in which we will discuss as, as uh, um, um, the confidence building measure are the action taken to reduce fear or, or attack by both parties in the situation uh, in simple we may says that is and every nation world international peace and security they want to eliminate it the arm race the war are, are, uh, so peace building confidence is a positive thinking and positive measure so with this introduction introductory line i would like to invite our resource person to please take the session and continue please sir take the session okay thank you uh, thank you vijay behra for your kind uh, kind introduction on disarmaments and arm conflict uh, uh we uh, today we are little bit uh, going to the technical uh, technical terms or uh, i would say uh, little bit uh, new new words or new thing to you so i would request all the learner all the participant if you have any problems on any technical terms on anywhere in the class please do drop your uh, pro uh, question or drop your uh, uh, problems in the chat box i will read it and i will try to answer the question right so today as uh, bijay bhai or have already mentioned about we are going to discuss about uh, disarmament and arms controls and uh, uh, it's it's not a new phenomena disarmament arms controls not a new phenomena it's uh, we can find Uh, we can found in uh, in post uh, second world war as i mentioned in my last class the united nations security council and the un even systems even the united nations systems so uh, we have discussed the uh, in the last class the peace keeping peace making and peace building uh, peace building process of international organizations or international community or united nations systems so today we'll go one step ahead from um, uh, one step ahead from uh, the uh, the peace process of the peace process of the system of peace uh, peace uh, peace process in the international systems so uh, as you as we uh, clearly mentioned the uh, concept of disarmaments and arm controls basically we'll uh, discuss the what is the disarmaments how it is the arm controls and what are the element or what are the different agreement uh, of international institutions or international country or the or the or the global country have been taken place to solve the uh, solve the problem of nuclear weapons or uh, or mass destructions of, uh, of 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 nuclear weapons in in the world right so 
let's have a brief introduction of what is disarmament and what is arm controls. Uh, the concept of disarmament and arm controls was began uh, after the Second World War or the formation of United Nations. The, all those states have uh, nuclear weapons. On, like uh, that particular time, the, all those states did have nuclear weapons, but over a period of time, uh, all the developed states or developing countries have the nuclear developed their have been developing their nuclear weapons. So now the now the question is, if they are developing the nuclear weapons, then it is a it is a it is a dangerous or like a vulnerable thing or like a big concern for all the international community members in the world. How they can stop the how they can stop the use of nuclear weapons or how the how they can stop to develop the nuclear uh, nu nuclear stockpiles in their uh, in their in, in, in the states so all the states have the nuclear weapon all the state have stockpiles of their nuclear weapons and i believe states have a uh, risk to use the nuclear weapons in the in, in 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 the war or in the conflict in the state conflict because the state in, if you can go in anywhere in the world the states are involved in different type of conflict in a different level. For example, the states are involved of a conflict like border conflict, conflict like civil war, conflict and different other aspect of, of, their, of their interest. So if a state have a nuclear weapon, then the state is more risky to use the nuclear weapon at any point of time. Right. So what the international institution is doing that not to use that nuclear particular nuclear weapons or other uh, uh, stockpiles of their nuclear weapons for any particular conflict or any particular uh, uh, disturbance in, to, in, in the in the states or outside the states, right? So now try to understand what is disarmament is. Disarmament as a process, or you can say, it's a it's a it's a word connote simply means denying oneself or a country from possess, possessing weapons or a certain type of weapons, right? Which means, disarmament can see be country, can see be a country, but can see be a country, country, both a country, can see be a weapon, can see be a weapon, right? Can see be a weapon, can see be a weapon, can see be a weapon, disarmament. And that's why I say that state, when I say nuclear weapon, uh, on second world war, a pore, when I say nuclear weapon, they develop for the body. And that's why I regulate the body. 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 That's why I regulate the Mechanism start no kala, kichi yo di institution start no kala, kichi organization yo di start no kala, yo di interference no kala. Tahle se jay country, jo country nuclear weapons develop kori chi. Yo di can see bhi, kone see bhi conflict jay se jay ta kui use kori diya, tahle it would be impact the whole civilizations of the world. As I, uh, as I clearly mentioned in the last class about the US uh, drop the nuclear weapons in Japan, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The, consist, the consequence was so so pathetic or so devastated or so destroyed in particularly in Japan that particular time to use the nuclear weapon in Hiroshima and Nagasaki because there are place or there are area in Nagasaki and Hiroshima the, the situation is still not in the form of living. I mean the, the child, the children are not in the are not not in the position to be a normal life, not in a position to be a uh, a growth a growth and a very good life. So 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 the nuclear weapon in the Indian in the in the human civilizations is one of the most destructive form of weapons through which it can devastate or it can hamper or it can destroy a large number of civilizations in the world. And that is the thing, the disarmament, the concept of disarmament talk about. The disarmament talk about don't, don't, don't develop the nuclear weapons 
you expect people of the uh, small nuclear weapons, nuclear gas, or anything like any submarine form of uh, nuclear weapons or explosive bombs or anything. The United Nations or under the umbrella of United Nations has guided that no country should have developed the nuclear weapons for their own national interest. But later on, we will discuss what are the consequences or what are the different uh, developed and developing countries taken the decision to develop the nuclear weapons or not develop the nuclear weapons. We will we'll discuss that on the later part of my discussion. Basically, the disarmament is a process of is a goal of is a goal process to develop the peace movement in the individual civilizations. Because as I mentioned in my just before argument, it is a pro peace process. Disarmament is a peace process developed by the different um, uh, in integrations of the different country in the United Nations for a movement to spread peace in the world. And how do, how do we spread peace in the world? Like, if a state is not using the nuclear weapons, which means in any, in any terms of their conflict, which means if, if, if the problem will be solved through the different, different, uh, different agreement, different diplomatic engagement, different military support, or different other mechanism, then the country will not use the nuclear weapon. It's a movement of peace. It's a movement of peace process. It's a movement of develop a sense of uh, confidence within the within the state. And by the by the umbrella of United Nations, please, no state can use the nuclear weapon against any other country. That's why there is a uh, there is a concept in United Nations that. Uh, if the problem of one state is a problem of whole states, it means one problem is uh, become relevant to the problem of whole states. If a country is facing problem or if a country is attacked by another country on in terms of their uh, territorial dispute or any other dispute, and if or if, the, if a country is using the nuclear weapons, then it is a problem for the whole nation of the United Na whole 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 nation of the world. For example, that particular time, the other, other like in uh, only U.S. had a, U.S. had a, U.S. had only the nuclear weapon uh, states, including U.S. that was U.S.S.R. had a nuclear weapon states. But in that particular time, there was no states who have who possessed the nuclear weapons. It means nobody knew that the relevance or the dangerous uh, the the the, the the degree of uh, the degree of tension or the degree of danger uh, degree of the situation of once a nuclear weapon drop in the Japan nobody knew that Be before that no no incident was happened or no incident was occurred in the in the attack or drop of nuclear weapons so this is this was the time where every state like all the states or all the uh, all the uh, uh, states are serious about how the nuclear weapons is a is a is a measure of great uh, great great insecurity in the sense for the whole world. That's why, therefore, the United Nations organizations or the United Nations system has developed the concept of disarmaments of nuclear weapons, as I clearly mentioned about this. How the disarmament works. Now we'll discuss about the arms control. What is arms control? The, the theorist of arm control, so the realist theorist, the realism perspectives of uh, international relations, they talks about or they discuss about, for example, as uh, Bijay has clearly mentioned, then the uh, Hans J. Morgan, uh, then uh, Machiavelli, or then other uh, realist thinker, or yeah, like we can say, uh, uh, Karls, uh, uh, just forgot, the, forgot his name, just. Other realist perspectives or the realist thinker talk about the arms control. They believe they 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 do believe the existence of nuclear weapon is fine, right? Every state can possess the nuclear weapon, but the state can nuclear weapon, which means 
if a state have a nuclear weapon, that's fine. He can he has developed a nuclear weapon, he can keep it, you can possess it, no problem on that. But you can't you can't use that nuclear weapon. You can't you can't like explode the nuclear weapons in any state, in any conflict. This is the this is the argument of realist on the arms control uh, yes. So they have mentioned in three uh, three main um, three main uh, major uh, you can say uh, uh, perspectives of argument. Basically, they also talks about the realist also talks about uh, a state can have a nuclear weapons, but the United Nations or the institutions can negotiate with the particular state. To not to stockpiling their nuclear weapons further. Now, what is stockpiling means? Stockpiling means a country have a large number of nuclear, a large number of uh, raw materials of the science and technology to develop the nuclear weapons, or to keep or to store the larger amount of nuclear weapons for their own interest or for their own benefit. They can use their wars, what? But the arms arms control. The theorist argues that. They, they they can negotiate with the state. For example, US have nuclear weapons, USSR are nuclear weapons in that particular time. France have nuclear weapons, or China have nuclear weapons, or Germany have nuclear weapons. Now the United Nations will negotiate with the state. No problem, you have nuclear weapons, you can keep it. You can't develop or you can't stockpile the nuclear weapons or you can't use that nuclear weapons against any other state. And now let's, let's we will discuss how this, how they negotiate with the state. They have three main mechanism to negotiate with the state. The first is arms limitation. The second is, no, the first is arms control policy. The second is arm limitation. And the third is arm breach, arm breach. In the first I had mentioned arms control policy or arms reduction, what they will do, the United Nations or the members of United Nations or the UN or the General Assembly or the International Security Council will discuss or will have an agreement with the, with the state who have nuclear weapons. For example, the United Nations Security Council or the United Nations or the General Assembly have a negotiation with US or USSR or China or Germany or France. No matter that what we have developed your nuclear weapons, but you can't use that nuclear weapons against any state. But before that, before 1947, it was not there. Before 1947, there was no United Nations. Before 97, not Forty-seven. There was no international organizations. So, in the in the contemporary history or in the contemporary uh, period from 1947 to till 2020, the United Nations had actively worked to control the uh, control the use of nuclear weapons. So now, the first arm reduction is the main is the, is the main instrument to control the nuclear weapons. The United Nations engage or United Nations uh, sign the agreement, negotiate with the state, please don't use the nuclear weapons. Basically, it seek to lower the nuclear weapons development or the innovation. Basically, nuclear, basically United Nations engage to lower, whatever you have developed, you develop position, you don't have to develop it, you don't have to develop it, you don't have to develop it, you don't have to nuclear weapons, you don't have to control it, you don't have to develop it. The second is arms limitation. Arms limitation is basically it's a scope to limit the limit the new technology, limit the uh, new uh, development of new weapons or a new technology. For example, for example, a state has already a particular set of a, a numbers of nuclear weapons for the age of for the year of 1960 or 1970. Now, the what United Nations will do, United Nations will do, United Nations impose, United Nations have agreement or different negotiation with that particular state. 
Now you are not able to, or you are not in a position to develop the nuclear weapons further. You have to stop it. That you, you are not, you are, you are now not in a position. You are, you the United Nations will not give you any scope to further uh, your further the development of your nuclear weapons. This is the process. This is the process. This is the direct involvement of a of United Nations with the state. And this is the only process we can stop the nuclear weapons or the arm control. Otherwise, there is no other option. That is, it means the whole nation is like in a in a race to develop the nuclear weapons, irrespective of their economic standard. Look at the uh, case of Pakistan. Look at the case of North Korea. If you, if you go to the if you if you, if you look that look at their GDP per growth uh, the growth uh, the growth rate and their per capita income of a state is far low if you compare to India or if you compare to any other developed states. But still, they are in the race to develop the nuclear weapon. Why? Because the nuclear weapon provides you such a power through which the you can dominate in the world system, you can dominate in the international systems, like US and China and USSR, US, China, Russia, and Germany and France are doing the same. So once, once a country will develop the nuclear weapons, that means he is neglecting other different thing in their state. He's, over, he's overlooking or he's, over, uh, he's not taking seriously other thing in the state. For example, poverty is there, education problem is there, social security is there. There are lots of things in the state, but he's, neg he's neglecting this. He's ignoring that part. And he's busy to develop the nuclear weapons. So for that context, the United Nations Security Council has a serious role, has an important role or vital role to play to please don't use the nuclear weapons or please don't develop the nuclear weapons. This is only process we can stop the development of nuclear weapons, right? And the third point is arms breach. Arms breach basically the same process. Like whatever the arms they have or they supposed to develop, we can freeze it. We can stop it. Or there is no level of uh, there is no level of uh, new development of their weapons. Which means, if a state is, if a state is develop a certain uh, certain uh, nuclear weapons or a certain period of time, then the United Nations will not provide another opportunity for that particular state to develop further. No, they will not. They will not. They will not grant you permission because they have a. Look at the case of Iran. Right. If you if you. If you everybody must have know the a, a clear example of Iran, like the United Nations and the organizations of United Nations, IAEA, have strongly or actively engaged with Iran. Please don't, uh, please don't uh, uh, invent or please don't develop any such nuclear weapons further. Otherwise, you have to pay your consequence, like the uh, attack of. Uh, U.S. Uh, and United Nations and NATO forces in Iran in 2001 and 2. And in Afghanistan simultaneously. So this is one if state is that different thing. The, the realist or different scholar have a different opinion on the Iran uh, war or by the U.S. by the U.S. Uh, or NATO forces in Iran. They say that they are developing the nuclear weapons, but uh, that there be some other reason they attacked on Iran, but the if the if the United Nations justify that they had developed the nuclear weapons, which means there should be something in the uh, something in something in Iran should uh, U.S. or the NATO forces got it, and they that's why they attacked there. So this is whole process the United Nations working on to stop the nuclear weapons. There are other two another two mechanism I try to explain you. The first is nuclear deterrence. The, the concept of nuclear deterrence was began in the Cold War by US, by the against of USSR and US, USA and USSR. Since after the Second World War, the world become divided in two parts. One side, there is the capitalist bloc, USA. Other side, there is the socialist bloc, USSR. Their objective is not and 
to divide the wall to divide the wall in two separate block their objective is began from 1947 1945 sorry and the objective was the objective was to who who it means they have developed or they have been developed their nuclear weapons in the different phases to dominate in the world system to dominate in the international systems and also the alliance or the 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 uh, the alliance with the different other country developing country developed country latin american country african country asian country and other country like in the first phase you you are say already have nuclear weapons since 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 say, during this cold war time in 1950s or 1955 ussr developed the nuclear weapons in the state because ussr didn't know that usa is going to drop the nuclear weapons in japan during this during the second world war and both usa and ussr were the one, were the one block they are fighting from the one side and the usa didn't reveal that usa is going to drop the nuclear weapons in japan and basically this is the this is this is the this is the this is the notion borrowed by the ussr it was a betrayal to it, it was a betrayal to their uh, to their to their trust as because they are in the same side but still they were not informed by the usa and dropped nuclear weapons in japan and from that particular incident the cold war began the cold war the concept of cold war began and from that particular context ussr now developed the nuclear weapons in the in the international arena to develop or to dominate or to influence in the international systems right so nuclear deterrence basically basically uh, basically a idea uh, it was developed during the time of 1960s 5 or 70s and that particular time both usa and ussr already have developed different type of nuclear weapons they have like large number of stockpiles of nuclear weapons they have like a uh, different submarines they have like uh, uh, atom bomb and uh, different explosionous gas to stockpiles in their in the in the stock so the nuclear deterrence is a process through which involved by the third party the uh, the uh, the uh, the united nations to stop further development or further test of the nuclear weapon they try to they try to stop the uh, stop the both the country not to test further nuclear weapons in international system or in the world and for that they have a different phases of negotiation and for that they have a different phases of agreement between uh, between between united nations and between the uh, usa and ussr we'll discuss after that only And the second is the mutually assured destruction. Now, what is mutually assured destruction? Both USA and USSR they mutually agree to destroy particular numbers of nuclear weapons to not further use or not further uh, develop. They both have a mutually discussion because they are the bilateral. bilateral uh, bilateral you can say bilateral agreement between both uh, both us and ussr because both us and ussr one point of time is try to uh, try to dominate in the international systems in that particular time they want to uh, they want to prove their ideology in the international systems and how can they prove they can prove only through the dominance in the systems in the in the world in the globe and they can dominate on the basis of the development of the nuclear weapon right if they have nuclear weapons no state no state can even think to attack no state can even think to dilute us role in the international systems and same the ussr was not also 
like behind ussr is like in the race to this is a race to develop different type of advanced and sophisticated nuclear weapons to have a strong influence in the world right like usa on the one hand he tried to negotiate with the pakistan tried to negotiate with the china tried to negotiate with the other different country ussr on the other hand tried to also negotiate with india negotiate with uh, uh, other east asian country to 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 form a new new block to form a new uh, uh, part or to form a new systems as you can see in the first world war and second world war that was two block in one block usa ussr britain other block that was japan italy and germany so basically they try to they try to again divide the state or divide the world in the context of a block in the context of call as cold war in the cold war they have a socialist block and the capitalist block they try to they try to formulate the state in that sense but the developing country on that particular time don't want to involved either with the with the either in, with the block they try to be separate they try to be their own identity they try to believe their own identity they try to develop their economic political and social linkages with the country separately or individually they don't want to be part of the either block of uh, capitalist block or socialist block but sometime after some period of time some point of time both the country like uh, both the usa ussr try to negotiate pakistan and india on their side because they have a such a, they have such important problem like they have uh, involved in a uh, involved in a war in 1971 war in 1965 so somehow that situation create to uh, this is create uh, create for create a sense or create a space for both the country to to alliance or to negotiate right so you 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 have a clear picture of what is disarmament what is arm controls and what is in between the arm controls what is the what are the main criteria of arm controls now I have a little bit brief uh, brief introductions of the history of disarmament and arm controls right the disarmament of arms control basically began as i mentioned in the post uh, post second world war the main two reason was given by uh, to the history of the historical perspectives of arms controls was in 1947 when uh, when 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 usa give a proposal or usa uh, give a proposal to baruch uh, baruch plan baruch plan basically the objective of plan was ussr uh, us told the international system of the whole world let's have a form a international uh, international atomic development authority to regulate the nuclear weapon or the the arms control systems but ussr didn't agree with the proposal of usa and ussr again give a proposal to the united systems so the united nations that let's not form the international atomic development authority let's form a group called grumco plan grumco plan g r o m g r o m y k o k k o grumco plan in 1949 1949 1952 basically this is this is this is the time the ussr given the plan or given the idea but in that part usa declined that he will be not part of that particular plan the objective was same they have a different object they have a objective and they have a objective on that particular time ussr was not ready because ussr in 1947 onwards tried to develop the nuclear weapons and tried to develop the new technology tried to develop the uh, uh, different other nuclear weapons that's why united ussr didn't want to any institution which will regulate or who is which will, which will interfere on their activity and ussr 
reject that plan. And again, USSR gave a plan which is rejected by US, USA. So all these rejections was done by the both US and USSR. And finally, in 1953, the president of US, Eisenhower, Eisenhower, he come, he came a conclusion that no, we'll not listen both of you. We'll not listen both of uh, under the under the under the under the leaderships of uh, U.S. president in the United Nations. Let's come to a proper conclusion, and they have developed IAEA, International Agency, International Atomic Energy Agency, International Atomic Energy Agency. The objective of International Atomic Agency is to regulate of nuclear weapons of a particular state. The objective of this IAEA to regulate all the state all over the world, which country or which state developing what in terms of the nuclear weapon. If a state nuclear weapon, he has to be reported to the uh, to the to the United Nations, or the United Nations can directly intervene to that particular state and provide uh, and impose sanctions on that particular state. Sanction in the sense, like if if there is no economy in that particular state, if there is no economic involvement of that particular state, then the state can't have revenue to invest on nuclear weapons. Take a case of Iran. When United Nations informed or IA, IAEA informed, or IAEA have a strong investigations in Iran. Once they informed that Iran has been developing the nuclear weapons, then what IA, IAEA have done, they impose or this they impose the sanction in Iran. Like Iran can export their uh, nuclear, uh, Iran can export their uh, petroleum product to other country in the world. Iran can export their any other economic or any other commodity to the world. Or no country can access Iran route to export that product. Which means, which means Iran is not getting revenue from other part of world in terms of that tariff or in terms of that taxes. Or secondly, if Iran will not be able to export that product, it means the revenue of Iran will be less. So on that context, how a country can invest large amount of capital to, a, to, to, to develop the nuclear weapons? As I clearly mentioned in my previous examples also, Pakistan, Pakistan, the growth rate, if you, if you see the growth rate, if you see the living standard of Pakistan, if you see the economic situation of Pakistan, it's far, far lower than India. But still, Pakistan is involved to develop the nuclear weapons. Right. And same thing uh, happened in Iran also. The economic growth and the, uh, the GDP growth per capita income and the living standard of Iran also not that good, not in the, in the United Nations standard or the, not in the human index standard. But still they are busy to develop the nuclear weapons. So the role of IAEA is to regulate or is to monitor the state on the basis of their, if a state is developing the nuclear weapons or not. If he's developing the nuclear weapons, then the state will take the decision or the IAEA, IAEA will take the decisions according to the according to their requirement to stop the development of nuclear weapons. Right. So this is the this is the this is the role or this is the historical brief historical of uh, develop, uh, disarmaments and arm controls. So basically disarmaments and arm controls are undertaken under the under the agency of IAEA. Under the under institutions of IAEA is the particular specialist agency under the umbrella of United Nations. So I hope everybody got the a brief or got a clear idea how disarmaments and arm controls have been taken place in the international systems to control the development of nuclear weapons. Now we'll discuss about what are the what are the different arms, what are different agreements. Uh, has been signed between different other country uh, uh, globally or bilaterally to uh, to control the disarmaments and arm controls. 
the first agreement was signed in uh, 1961 that is atlantic treaty atlantic treaty uh, basically deals deals with the argues that no country no usa no ussr because usa and ussr can access the atlantic area like no you no country in the world no country usa or ussr can use atlantic to test their nuclear weapons it means if they will test the nuclear weapons the debris and other uh, other 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 chemical or uh, dangerous thing will be left in the atlantic that will impact the ecology that will impact the climate that will impact the uh, climate system of of atlantic so uh, in 1961 the agreement was signed between all the country including us and ussr no no test no nuclear test can be done or can be tested in atlantic region right the second is uh, but, uh, so second agreement is partial test ban treaty in 1963 the partial test ban treaty basically signed between the uk ussr and usa the objective of partial test ban treaty was no country or no no all the three particular state or five particular country can test their nuclear weapon any space like outer space water space inner space mane jo am underground test hue ki water re test hue ki space se test hue kono se bhi country mane 1963 partial test ban treaty hisab re kono se bhi country kono se bhi jagah re kono se bhi nuclear weapon test kari pariba तापर एक नाम माने काम तो आर्म्स कंट्रोल की डिजर्नमेंट कंट्रोल करी पारो आज कथा लगी पारो यदि से माने टेस्ट करियो तो वे सब जगह आ जे मतलब आर्म्स कंट्रोल के भी हे पारो तो 1963 रे पीटीबीटी पार्शियल टेस्ट बैन ट्रीटी साइन कराइतला जारा मुख्य उद्देश्य थिला कि कोनोसे भी सरफेस रे कोनोसे भी आउटर स्पेस रे कोनोसे प्रकार न्यूक्लियर टेस्ट करा जीवा न करा जीवा कथा और जे जोटा की केते सक्सेस इतला केते फेलुअर इतला सेटा हमें पहले डिस्कस करियो हला एंड द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट ट्रीटी एज इन द वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री इज एनपीटी व्हिच वाज साइंड इन 96 1968 एंड द एनपीटी कम इनटू फोर्स इन 1970 द नॉन प्रोलिफरेशन ट्रीटी नॉन प्रोलिफरेशन ट्रीटी under the umbrella of under the guidance of united nation signed by 187 country the objective of non proliferation treaty was before 1967 or 1968 or 1970 mane it means before 1970 let's before 1970 those country have nuclear weapons they can only they can only possess or they can only keep the nuclear weapon those country don't have nuclear weapons before 1970 they can't develop the nuclear weapons after 1970s this is the this is the this is the this is the main uh, main agenda of non proliferation treaty but the country like india pakistan china and north korea found that the treaty is or the agreement is a discriminate discriminative treaty or discrimination for the for the state those don't have nuclear weapons because some country are not were not in that position on that particular time to develop the nuclear weapons for example india or pakistan or china or north korea take for example pakistan got independence or india got independence that particular time it means both india and pakistan were not in the position and that particular time to develop the nuclear weapons like india can't invest their whole amount of money in that particular time in 1970s to develop the nuclear weapons because in india we have to develop the different institution you have to develop the education institution you have to develop the health education health systems you have to develop the road systems and different other element so india thought that we were not in that position in that particular time to develop the nuclear weapons but now 
in the 1990s or in the 2000 or in the 2010 or 20 we were in a position to develop the nuclear weapons for the state for the interest of the state and if we sign the non-proliferation treaty then we will be not in a position to develop the nuclear weapons further and the second main reason for india was in one side of india there is pakistan in the other side of india there is china and both india and pakistan both both china and pakistan are so, are, are vulnerable state for india they always have a, they always uh, invaded or interventions or, or engaged in a different conflict different territorial conflict or different border conflict or different lsc conflict or different loc conflict with india so if india will not develop the nuclear weapons which means the, the role of pakistan and the role of china will be dominated in india and that's india don't want to be dominated by either country india want to be in a position to which no state can threat him no state can threat india and no state can threat india only if you have if you have positions of nuclear weapon so india didn't sign the non proliferation treaty pakistan didn't sign the non proliferation treaty but a part of india and pakistan and china and north korea 187 members were signed the non proliferation treaty including us china, including us ussr uk germany france or any other country so non proliferation treaty is basically a discriminative treaty or a vertical treaty for the developing country those who got independence on that particular time so the next stage salt strategic arm limitation treaty which was signed in 1972 strategic arm limitation treaty was a bilateral treaty between usa and ussr the strategic arm limitation treaty was signed on the consequence or on the circumstance of Cuban crisis. Cuban crisis was occurred in 1962 in the, during the Cold War. Now, what is Cuban crisis? Cuban crisis, basically, if you understand that, Russia is a communist state and Cuba is a communist state. And both Russia and Cuba have a strong political alliance in the Cold War. So, in that particular in that particular time, in that particular uh, uh, area, in that particular context, USSR developed their nuclear base in the Cuba. Try to develop their nuclear base in the Cuba. In the in the in the in the in the sea or in the ocean of Cuba. And which was which was not directly which, which was not directly known by USA, but over the period of time, USA knew that the USSR tried to develop their nuclear base in Cuba on the support of Cuban political regime. So now, from that incident, 1962 to 1972, USA tried to negotiate including with the help of United Nations, have signed or have signed agreement with USSR on the basis of SALT agreement called as Strategic Arm Limitation Treaty. The Strategic Arm Limitation Treaty is basically a bilateral treaty between the USA and USSR. The objective of this treaty is to reduce the number of nuclear weapons or the stockpile, stockpile stock or the submarines both USA and USSR by the mutual agreement. They say that Asimana Kohileji, I'm a mutually I'm a submarine hala, kinoa no technology hala, no nuclear weapon technology hala, the other different different technology hala, I'm a reduce kaliba. They will negotiate kali. Mana they will negotiate it like uh to Jobiso Semana nuclear weapons, bombs, atom bombs, la semana reduce kali, development or reduce kali. Or develop kori bani. Ki jodi bhi develop kuchh na koi use kori bani. Ki jodi bhi develop kuchh na koi count kori bani. Dui konti negotiate kare. Jeta ki mande kana kotha kisi din pore salt two agreement start hala. 
अफगानिस्तान को इंटरवेंशन कर अफगानिस्तान को The objective was same. Both the it was signed in 1991, and it was after the dissolution of after the disintegration of Soviet Union, or we can say the independent Russia on one Rus one Russian Federation. Now USA and USSR have a strong uh, agreement of a strong discussion with uh, United Nations to sign the Start One and Start Two. But both the country didn't agree on their recommended negotiation. Then again, the both country uh, are were in the position to uh, develop some little bit of nuclear weapons. Then in 1996, the last uh, there are lots of agreement, but I try to highlight main or important uh, agreement because if I will uh, try to discuss every agreement, then. It will take another two to three class to finish. So the last agreement I will try to discuss is the CTBT, Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. It was signed in 1996. Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty means no state in the world can test their nuclear weapons in the anywhere in the world. no state in the world no developing develop under develop no state in the world have any scope to develop their nuclear weapons in the any space in the in in the, in the ecological system a state can use water a state can use outer space a state can use space to use their nuclear weapons or a state can use the submarines to use the nuclear weapons All the state has strongly restricted by the United Nations not to use the nuclear weapons. But a part of that, India was tested his nuclear weapons in 1998 in Pokhran. Before that, in 1974, Pokhran first was tested. Because India knew that without the nuclear weapons or without testing nuclear weapons to maintain stability in the state is not possible. in the context of india only in the context of south asian region i'm saying because pakistan is not able to listen to india china is one hand is strong alliance with pakistan india have already india have already uh, india have already uh, uh, so much uh, uh, india has already involved different war or different uh, different different conflict with pakistan in 1947 1965 1971 1990 and what so india don't want to be uh, in a position to uh, not to maintain stability in the south asia region so now in the concluding of this unit the whole uh, the all the agreement all the uh, uh, nuclear agreement between Between uh, bilaterally or between in uh, between international institutions of the country, provide a sense that 
even though we have a different agreement of even though we have a different nuclear agreement start from the atlantic to the finish from the ctbt or any other agreement but still the state the developed state or the developing states are engaged to develop the nuclear weapons for their own national interest or for the state or the regional stability even though usa and ussr are involved in a different nuclear agreement but still both usa and ussr in that particular cold war time bc with the develop different 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 nuclear technology different nuclear uh, uh, stockpile so all the agreement and all the uh, negotiation somehow it's not impacted that much but but somehow it control the arms race or is control to uh, develop the uh, uh, nuclear weapons but it is not that much of impacted because the little bit all the country are involved in the conflict usa you are involved in a conflict in afghanistan from 2001 to 2014 ussr were busy with afghanistan from 1979 to 1989 1999 in 90 so this is the this is the this is the hypocrite this is the hypocrite approach or the double standard approach of usa and ussr particularly as because they called as a developed state they can develop the nuclear weapons no, no state can do or no institutions can do anything but they may be the united nations is highly dominated by them so now try to understand that the nuclear weapon is such a uh, is such a uh, is such a dangerous thing for the whole community or for the whole world for the whole nation for the whole international systems once a state can use the one state use the nuclear weapon it will devastate all the all the systems all the states okay so next we'll uh, let's uh, uh, try to uh, understand the what is confident buildings measure in your next unit now we we have already discussed the nuclear weapons now we'll try to discuss the confident buildings measures how we can how the armies or the disarmaments can control through which we can develop a, another mechanism called as confident buildings measures to stop the using of nuclear weapons to stop the using the uh, arms munitions in the conflict between a bilateral war or a world war or any other context confident buildings measures as a mechanism as a peace process or a peace um, instrument in the peace and conflict uh, studies or in the peace and conflict resolution to solve or to engage institutionally with the country to solve the problem which is called confidence buildings measure peace and conflict studies or disciplinary with a mechanism a je ki peace process ko develop karu chi se ko chi je conflict man direct war ram engage hawani ude institution achi her bilateral institution ho ki international institution ho ki broader institution ho third party institution ho semana kaam karibe kono se bhi conflict ko conflict hawa ko na jabe semana stop karibe se institution stop karibe नेगोसीएट कर फर्स्ट इज मिलिटरी नेगोसीएसन डिप्लोमेसी नेगोसीएसन एंड कल्चरल और पोलिटिकल नेगोसीएसन बट अलवेज मिलिटरी एंड डिप्लोमेटिक नेगोसीएसन आर इन द अपर हैंड रादर दैन कल्चरल एंड पोलिटिकल नेगोसीएसन समटाइम इन वर् the culture and political aspect they don't impact much they don't impact to stop the war rather diplomacy or a military intervention somehow uh, somehow you can see the development of confidence you can see it uh, tomorrow, uh, yesterday there was a uh, there was a discussions or there was a uh, there was a uh, there was a meeting between uh, indian army and chinese army chinese pa public army in of china and indian army 
because the Chinese uh, claim that uh, the Pangong Lake of Le Ladakh, the half of the Pangong Lake or half of the Pangong area, I belong to China. And India claim that no, it is not belong to you. It is belong to us. So both the both the armies were uh, both the armies have been uh, involved in the different negotiation. But yesterday there was a clear vision or clear meeting between US between India and China to uh, to uh, to their border border line or to their LSC line of line line actual line of actual control. So this type of this type of uh, this type of uh, uh, this type of intervention or this type of instrument try to solve the problem between the uh, between two country or between the other different country so uh, let's let's uh, let's try to uh, try to uh, try to understand the three three main element of uh, confident buildings measures how these confident buildings measures created and how the confidence building how the situation try to develop uh, try to create situation through which the confident buildings measures as a concept uh, developed in the international systems just one second huh? the first is <clears throat> soviet expansions in europe in 1947 The Soviet expansion in Europe, in particularly in Greece or any other European country, in 1947, provided a sense of space to think by the USC or the other international community. And they think that if US, USSR will develop their influence in, in the Europe, then what will be the consequence of international systems? Then the international systems and the whole world, including USA, try to develop the confidence building measures with USSR. Please don't try to impose or please don't try to influence on the euro. You can concentrate on your particular area. So please, like both the USA and USSR have a strong influence a strong discussion or strong negotiation for the development of confident buildings measures. <clears throat> the second is, so second element is nuclear weapons expansion. Both USA and USSR developed the nuclear weapons during the Cold War. So both the country try to, uh, try to limit each other to not to expand their nuclear weapons. So they developed the confident buildings measures. Like I said that they have signed different agreements, salt agreement, NPT agreement, start agreement, and other, other agreement to solve the problem. And the third is Cuban Missile Crisis 1962. Cuban Missile Crisis provided a big, big threat to US. Like, US can't even imagine USSR can, uh, can have a conspiracy with Cuba, can't have a conspiracy with an excess of Cuba against USA. And then USC think that without confidence buildings measures or without a platform of confidence buildings measures, we can't solve the problem. Right. So the confident buildings measures playing a big role between with the, with the USC and USSR to somehow try to solve the problem. For, for, for to stop the nuclear weapons development or for to stop the other uh, direct or indirect conflict between uh, between uh, between between USSR and USA and other uh, uh, country, we will discuss the confident buildings measures in South Asian context, in India, Pakistan, and India China context. After one or two minutes, the <clears throat> three main <clears throat> three main process or the three main uh, uh, three main region in Europe which develop the uh, which develop the um, uh, confident buildings measures most strongly. The first is Helsinki process, 1975. The US president Helsinki <coughs> have to negotiate with uh, USSR uh, on, the, on the basis of, of his arms control. 
they have a sign a agreement or they have signed a confident buildings measures according to to the salt don't 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 use any further nuclear weapons or develop any further nuclear weapons this is this is the form of mechanism this is a form of uh, instrument to stop the development of nuclear weapons the second is stockholm accords in 1986 The Stockholm Accords in 1986, which was signed between uh, USA and USSR, all the uh, imposed on the other dependent country, the objective was the IAEA, as I mentioned in my in in the, in the previous unit, the IAEA will inspect and monitor the on-site and off-site and military uh, military uh, uh, military base of USA and USSR uh, to stop the. a uh, direct conflict in the direct conflict in that particular juncture they try to the iaea or the united nations or nsa security council uh, monitor the physically monitor the development of nuclear weapons and the third is vienna document vienna document was 1990 vienna document the, the the objective of vienna document was force deployment new open progress and defense expenditure information so basically the vienna Conf vienna conference or vienna documents 1998 talks about the data collection of the us and ussr now what is data collection of us and ussr as i as i mentioned they collected the data of how much of their uh, growth or how much of their gdp or how much of their revenue government revenue they are expending on health sector on education sector and defense sector they try to they try to acquire the data they try to assemble the data from the state through this vienna document and the objective was simple and the objective was because they they don't want to um, they don't want the state to uh, spend or expenditure as much as money to defense sector or to military sector they try to restrict their investment on the expenditure in the defense sector so this is this is the three element where the confidence building measures between usa and ussr was began and the it has implemented at the other part of the country like i will uh, briefly uh, take another 5 or 10 minutes to uh, uh, touch upon the india pakistan confidence building measures and india china confidence building measures India Pakistan confidence building measures was began in 1980 but it was began before uh, in 1966 like in the Tashkent Treaty or 1972 in the Simla agreement in the Tashkent Treaty um, it was signed by Ayub uh, Ayub uh, Muhammad Ayub Khan and uh, 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 late uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri the objective was just it, it was signed before just before 1965 war and the objective was maintain peace and the objective was not to again interfere or not to again intervene any territorial interventions or any dispute between india and pakistan no matter as it would be kashmir issues or any other issue kashmir is a big issue for india and china india and pakistan sorry india and pakistan the like india and pakistan have been involved to solve the kashmir issues since after independence 1947 they try to solve the kashmir issues through different mechanism through third party or bilaterally third party in, third party in the sense united nations also involved in the kashmir issues to try, to solve the problem india and pakistan also directly involved to solve the problem but they are failed the united nations are also failed somehow it was impacted but but if you see the current situation uh, neither country get any success on any agreement so tashkent treaty the is a confidence building measures similar agreement is a confidence building measures but officially or formally it was began in 1980 and i will give two more two example in 1972 uh, after similar agreement the samjhota express agreement was signed between india and pakistan the objective of samjhota agreement was to um, uh, to 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 start a rail uh, between uh, from uh, delhi to lahore and the rail will stop two three places in punjab in, uh, in, in amritsar or in any jalandhar or 
और यानी टू प्लेस ऑफ पंजाब बट द समझौता एक्सप्रेस वॉज फेलवर द रियलिस्ट अप्रोच आर यूज दैट द समझौता एक्सप्रेस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फेलवर अप्रोच मोस्ट फेलवर कॉन्फिडेंट बिल्डिंग मेजर्स बिटवीन इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान we we are not going to detail on the samjhauta uh, the realist approach of samjhauta agreement because if i go to detail there is lots of technicality is there so let it be we'll discuss it later on the second second confidence building measures was the bosch diplomacy in 1999 the bosch diplomacy was began under the leadership of uh, uh, atal bihari vajpayee the then president the then prime minister now uh, he is no more with us so the objective of atal bihari bajpay was clear if you are not people if you are not engaged with the people to people contact with india and pakistan or if you are not engaged in the track to diplomacy direct engagement with the people of pakistan or people of india we can't solve the problem between india and pakistan and somehow atal bihari bajpay have a clear vision that different confident building measures like boss agreement plus the uh, boss diplomacy can have some hope to solve the india pakistan problem for long period, for longer period of time but after some time the boss diplomacy was also failed because of there are terrorist attack on boss or bomb blast or different other thing and the main reason was in 2007 when us when pakistan or the when pakistan territory terrorism terrorist attacked on uh, uh, indian parliament the whole boss diplomacy uh, uh, concept was stopped right okay let's move to india china confidence building so we have less time we are uh, running late uh, uh, due time india china confidence building measures which began in 1954 on the on the sign of panchasil agreement the panchasil agreement between india and china was clear that no country can interfere or violate the lsc rule no country can encroach the territory of any country encroach the territory of india can encroach territory of china territory or china can encroach the territory of india they can't do that they they, they can't encroach any territory territory but the panchasil agreement was signed in 1954 but india and china were involved in a war or engaged in a war in 1962 and nobody no no nobody nobody thought that that particular time not even india india even uh, didn't realize that uh, china will attack him so this is the confident building measures of india pakistan and india china there are lots of thing but um, let me uh, if have some questions then you can ask so the whole process of on, on the concluding part i will i will i will i will argue that the confident building measures have a particular set of time or a limited time to get success but if you talk about the longer period of time the solve of the problem then it is not possible for the uh, for two one of the most disputed or most disputed land india pakistan india china you can you can't solve the uh, problem under the confident building measures there are so many confident building measures approach issues and has been done between india china and india pakistan but not a single confident building institutions has been working so far it's a, it's 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 a only a it's only a document the country don't believe on that but if the country will believe or if the country will stand on the confident building measures then the problem will be solved in in the region okay thank you so much vijay you carry on uh thank you dr antrayami the way you uh, elaborate all is and every points uh, so nicely Uh, like uh, the meaning of uh, disarmament and arm controls uh, uh, we may uh, conclude that there is a uh, similarities or the terms disarmament and arm control are often regarded uh, identically uh, 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 they are interchangeably uh, used because there is a confusion that uh, disarmament and armaments are the same thing but uh, one says that completely elimination and and another says that at you may use but in a limited uh, edition or limited way thank you sir the way you 
explain all this thing uh, in a very nicely uh, and you explain the ac the atomic energy commission and uh, the uh, conventional and uh, agreements and and the uh, 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 ptvt the partial test went treaty and is an every treaty so nicely how they want to eliminate and and want to keep peace and security in our country in the nation and in the whole world and so thank you sir once again i would like to thank for your nice presentation now we will take some question of the learners and and discuss all the point and so in our discussion as we have already discussed uh, about the nuclear uh, disarmament one of our learner asked Now, why is nuclear disarmament is important, uh, sir? Uh, as we have discussed, nuclear disarmament is the act of reducing or eliminating nuclear weapons. It can also be the end uh, state of a nuclear weapons-free world, as we know, uh, in in which nuclear weapons are completely eliminated. The process leading to complete nuclear disarmament. So we may, in simple, say that at nuclear disarmament is is required for international peace and security. so here uh, she want to ask why nuclear disarmament is important please uh, add some more points sir <clears throat> listen uh, as i discussed in my presentation also if we are not if united nations or any institutions is not taking any decision to disarmament or arm control of nuclear weapons so for example if there is no law for example if there is no agreement for example if there is no institution for example if there is no iaea then the whole systems the whole international states will be in a threat position will be in a feared position any country can use any any country can use nuclear weapons at any point of time if there is a conflict like from uh, from uh, from, uh, from after second world war you are not finding any um, any nuclear weapon war because we have the policy of disarmament because we have the uh, you have the united nations state you have the united nations security council you have the general assembly you have the iaea international uh, atomic agency uh, agency is there their role is to play the role is to control the nuclear weapons the role is to disarmament the nuclear weapons by negotiating with the state by negotiating or the law with the state if we are not in a position to disarmament the nuclear weapons the whole country will be in a place to dominate uh, because of they have nuclear weapons for example us have a nuclear weapons if there is no disarmament then then the situation would be uh, quite critical us or ussr the developed country will develop as much as the nuclear weapons they can do and which is not good for the world which is not good for the peace there so nuclear disarmament so the arms control is required to required to develop in the international systems by the united nations okay jake jo thank you sir uh, the next question is discuss the confidence building measure or cbm of india and pakistan regarding kashmir yes that's a good question yes sir hmm India and Pakistan are has been like they have been involving in different confidence building measures in 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 Jammu and Kashmir particularly not only India and Pakistan but also United Nations also involved in 1947 to solve the Kashmir issues in India and Pakistan but until and unless both the country will not involve with the citizen of Pak Kashmir Or the or, or the or the populations of Kashmir, we can't solve the any problem through CBM confident building measures. And both the countries somehow fail to engage with Kashmiri people or Kashmiri uh, Muslims or Kashmiri Pandit or any other uh, community of Kashmir. Since 1947, Pakistan didn't want, didn't try to uh, uh, understand the Kashmir issues genuinely. India in a position to. understand the kashmir issues but the political unrest and political disturbance in kashmir don't provide a ample opportunity to india or somehow india signed some agreement with pakistan to solve the kashmir issues through the cbm on pen buildings mein jo there are different uh, different uh, different different cultural event was going on in um, uh, in 
in in Kashmir, uh, there are different cultural uh, exchange between in, uh, between Kashmiris and uh, Pakistani uh, people are going on. The track to diplomacy, the people to people contact is there. The Kashmiri people can go there and um, uh, uh, because the Kashmiri people have that that their populations are also staying in in uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So there are different CBM. There are lots of CBM has been uh, uh, confidential buildings, major issues has been signed between India and Pakistan. But somehow, just because that political disturbance in both um, um, both uh, India and Pakistan, they are not able to in a position to solve the Kashmir issue so far. Okay, Vijay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, recently, also uh, the cross LOC trade is conducted. Uh, along uh, Muzaffarabad, Uri, uh, Uri Poonch and uh, Rawalkot. They are also developing their trade uh, business relationship and also they, have, they started uh, three new bus routes from uh, different uh, areas of uh, Pakistan to develop the trade uh, relationship. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is, uh, what is cross-border terrorism? Cross border terrorism is simple. Like if a, if a, if it uh, if the terrorism is crossing the border of a country of a of a of a international uh, boundary, then it is called cross border terrorism. For example, uh, uh, from Pakistan side, there are lots of terrorism crossing from international border LOC to India. So uh, this concept is called a cross uh, cross border terrorism or uh, terrorism. Uh, but Pakistan claim that they are not. They are not uh, crossing from Pakistan side. I don't know where they are crossing from or Pakistan on the on, uh, on the on the argument of Pakistan. They are crossing from their side and same in the same way the Pakistan is denying that they are not crossing from their side. So yeah. it is the ignorance of Pakistan, which even though he know but still he don't want to agree the fact of matter. Yes, sir. 14 February 2019 is also a great example of uh, this type of uh, terrorism attack. Uh, yes. I mean, suicide bomb attack on CRPF convoy in Pulwama district of Jammu Kashmir. That is also mm -hmm. a great example. So we may say that cross-border terrorism is a form in which soil of one country is used to create terror in bordering another country. Maybe uh, that is the uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, sir. So thank you, sir. This this one is the last question. I think yes, sir. Uh, uh, so on behalf of Orissa State University, I'd like to thank you, sir, for your patience in a holiday. Uh, you give us uh, your time, your patience. Uh, in a pandemic situation also so i i would like to thank all of the participants our technical team for their cooperation thank you sir thank you once again okay thank you thank you so much uh, any of the learners if they want to interact with our resource person they may please unmute their mic and please sir sir good afternoon sir yes good afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah, please sir first of all i would i would like to thank uh, uh Yami, sir for explaining everything, every point. Sir, touch upon all the points. I think I don't find any uh, scope Hello. left to ask, ask the question. And Hello, sir. Uh, I also thank uh, Vijay Kumar Vera, sir. Hello, sir. And, hello. Hello. and also... Yes, yes, I, yes, yes, LK Learning. Please, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 like yeah. after Domain Soren, and yeah. you will start. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I thank uh, Vijay Kumar Vera, sir, also for conducting these classes. And I also like to thank Devasish Bari sir and all the supporting staff, those who are behind the screen. And for those, this uh, program has been very, very successful. And last, I thank all of you, sir. Very good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, next, SK Learning is want to say something. Please continue. Please unmute your mic and continue. Apana Vishwas, next. Uh, please, please. Apana, Apana Vishwas, please mute your mic. Hello. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, very good morning, sir. Please continue. Uh, thank you, uh, both of you, sir. Uh, it is a very good for the learner in a pandemic situation. Please continue this uh, learning process even after uh, uh, pandemic is over. It is very useful for us, sir. Thank you, both of you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, the UGC, UGC and the government of Odisha also says that you have to cover this type of uh, virtual learning 25% and 75% by a face to face class. So uh, it is not only going to happen in, uh, in an open university like Odisha, uh, but also in other regular universities, they are also going to.
provide virtual class 25 portion so uh, uh, thank you sir for your nice comment sir, uh, sir uh, it is uh, more useful than personal yes, contact program yes sir face Hello? to face then it is very effective for me. yes sql learning please uh, uh, continue sir can you uh, hear me thank you thank yes you. sir continue, you continue sir? yes yes sql learning please continue sir yesterday i asked from question hello yes sir we are listening please continue uh, yesterday i asked from question but uh, it was not discussed uh, uh, with me hello okay sir that is fine uh, actually uh, various learners are asking questions but those questions are who have uh, already discussed by our resource person and due to certain of time we take only that question which is necessary for all and sometimes we also neglect some of the questions because that is already discussed by our resource person sir okay uh, sir okay. prepared for that sir okay sir thank you uh, thank you sir thank you okay welcome sir uh, so now we'll uh, close the session thank you once again all of you thank you our resource person thank you to the our uh, technical team thank you so much sir okay thank you thank you so much